2015 marks the 20th anniversary of Copenhagen, marks the 20th anniversary of Beijing, and is the 70th 70 birthday of the United Nations. Celebrating social development and celebrating gender balance and, 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 and the uh, Beijing Declaration uh, is, is very relevant to the work of the United Nations. Gender equality and social development are always inseparably interconnected. And therefore, the society cannot be fully developed without the great contribution of women and the equity and equality between women and men. So what is the role that we people, men and women, are going to, to play together? And how, therefore, the Declaration of Copenhagen uh, on social development and the Declaration of Beijing on women can support each other in this amazing challenge waiting ahead of us. Since the adoption and implementation of the two declarations, great progress has undoubtedly been made across the globe in social development, but persistent and emergent challenges must be examined. Approximately one half of the world's population is female, yet the higher up the ladder of prestige, influence, wealth, and power you go, the fewer women there are. In other words, the monitors of policymaking and their means of implementation are still largely male. It is people who must change cultures when necessary to ensure that there is gender equity in our social and economic development. Copenhagen and Beijing have encountered each other along the way. As to meeting and interacting and sharing and learning from one another and resolving to go forward, let's say till death do us part, I do not think so. Copenhagen recognized that empowering people, particularly women, to strengthen their own capacities is a major objective of development and its principal resource. Unfortunately, instead of generating strong synergies between Beijing and Copenhagen, the, these two fruits of major intergovernmental processes have often taken parallel rather than intersecting paths. Each recognizes the other's existence, and we as the advocates recognize, but we're not talking to each other sufficiently. Gender equality also benefits young men as it benefits young women. Interestingly, young women in the cohort of 15 to 30 would prioritize gender equality as a number five, number six priority out of a total of 16 options. Whereas young men in the same cohort would put gender equality as a 14th or a 15th or sometimes a last, which is number 16th. And this was a global phenomena. Ensuring their intergenerational partnership and dialogue, as we say on, on mutual understanding very clearly as part of the high-level meeting on youth, to ensure that gender equality is part of the life cycle, the life continuum, whether it's the children's agenda, the adolescent's agenda, youth agenda, or the adult, and the elderly. Both the summits in Copenhagen and Beijing uh, had a shared value. And that shared value was the importance of promoting inclusive and equitable social development for all. And I think, unfortunately, we've moved a little bit away uh, from uh, social development being a priority, and, and we need to get back to that. For the ILO, both the Beijing and the Copenhagen Declaration are, for us, rights-based arguments. This is about economic efficiency as well, too. Um, it's not only that gender equality in the world of work matters for human rights and justice for workers, but it also makes good business sense for employers and is instrumental in achieving economic growth and poverty reductions. Because we know that when, you're, when women are earning a living, they actually invest more in their children for their health, their education, and their housing, and that breaks the cycle of poverty. So both declarations are intertwined. We need to work together. I'm very saddened because Outside of the csoc -D world, not many people know about it. And it happened six months before Beijing, and the language in it is incredible. So I'm just going to give you a few stats, and you have to remember this happened six months before Beijing. There's 149 references to women. There's 39 additional references to gender. There's seven references to girls. There's 190 references to women and poverty. 152 references to education and training of women. 
there's 60 references to the human rights of women. The Copenhagen Commitment 5, which was pointed out, is the gender commitment. Interestingly enough, in the SDGs, goal number five is the gender commitment. What I quickly discovered were the silos within the UN and the even greater silos within the NGO community. And I couldn't understand how could anything work with those silos. So I went about making it my business to make sure for me they intersected. So wherever I went, if I was at a women's major group meeting, I might be talking about the Copenhagen Declaration, or when I was at CSW or CSACD, I might talk about the women's major group, because I couldn't understand how this could work if we're all in these separate silos. Family is the basis of society. So why don't we take on account the important role that family could have on these gender equality fight and on this social development. I absolutely agree that the role of family is, is essential and, and often overlooked. Um, and I'm very happy that uh, you and women actually are, are making some progress in engaging men and, and boys for gender equality. Early education children get is in the family. So um, gender equality, the treatment of sisters, mothers, um, is it's it's essential for for boys to um, to grow respecting uh, women. We have to look in ourselves and see what we personally have to offer that that the younger generation might not have to offer. So as a young person, if you see that in yourself, when you're thinking about how to develop your own skills and what you can give back to your community, think about that and where you can apply your skills and develop them while at the same time developing those younger than you. It's really about three E's, maybe education, empowerment, and enablement. We need to provide that opportunity for these three things uh, to happen. Policies are very important. Development is extremely important. And the role of men and women is what makes Copenhagen and Beijing meet and walk together beyond 2015. Thank you very much.